Hello students, myself Sumangla Birathar. So today we will discuss about uses for hash function and miscellaneous of cryptography. So first let us see what are the uses for hash function. One of the example here is the online bid as a user. Okay, use here. Online bid is who will bid more. So that person will be the winner now. So now for example here allies will place a bid of $10 here and Bob bids $12 here and then the same way Charlie bids $12.01. So then who is the winner now? Charlie is the winner. But here question is how Charlie will get to know that Bob is bids dollar 12 here okay that is the thing here because charlie is monitor the bidding amount of allies and also it okay charlie monitored bidding amount of the bob here so he accessed bidding amounts of both allies and bob so later he bid the amount as a 12.01 here so then question is how to prevent this information to try Okay, get to access by another person's here. So, for that you can go for help or take the help of the hash function here. What is that? Allies will submit instead of sending the amount directly as how much you are paid. So, if you are sent as a hash function of the bid amount, A is what here? Assume that A is the bid amount here. Dollar ten is now A here. And for this A, you are calculated hash value. And that hash value you are submitting instead of send, sending the bid amount as a dollar ten. Now you are submitting the hash value of the dollar ten here. In the same way, Bob will submit the hash value of the dollar twelve. That is P now. And Charlie will also submit the okay hash amount of okay dollar twelve point zero one. It's maybe the anything okay. So it may be the now because Charlie don't know what actually Ali said. Uh, Bob are submitted. Okay, that's why it may be the any amount here. So now all these are what? Now you are submitting the hash values of the bidding amount. So then if anyone try to access, then they can see only the hash value here. But what exact uh, value? That one is uh, hidden now. This is one of the Okay, users of the hash function. After receiving all the bits, the part participants will submit their actual bits here. So then ABC will be seen when after completion of the bidding here. Okay, at the end only. So this allies Bob and Charlie will show there what are the actual bits here in the place of the hash value. But while submitting, they are submitting the hash values here. In this way, you can prevent from this type of the attacks like this. So how Charlie is access the information of the allies and the pop here. Next one more use of hash function is spam reduction here. How we will reduce the spam? Spam email messages here. Okay. Let assume that M be an email message and let T be the current time here. So now if you are sending the any messages, so directly if you are sending the message, so now how receiver will get to know that this is the required message, it is not a spam here. So for identification of the spam, what is the thing you are doing here? Along with the message, you are sending the current time. So at what time you are sending, that is time is also you are adding here. So this is for very simple. So now email, you are okay, your friend is sending the message, email message to you now. So how we'll get to know that what are the message, email message you are received is okay from the Okay, what are the messages it is sent by the your friend here. So to get that if your current time is added, you know that this is the time. So now what are the time you are used now? So that based on that time you can guess that as yes, this is the actual message whatever it is sent by your friend here. If current time is not there, then what does the hackers will do? So they will access your email message and they will hold that one. Later they will submit to others here. Okay. So then your time if it is known, then you get to know that this is not the exact message here. Okay. So because time is varied, if it is not a current time is there in that particular message here. Based on that, you can identify the spam messages here. So along with that, messages M includes the sender's information and intended recipient's email address but does not include any additional addresses here.
So if you want to send the mail to your friend, what is the thing you will do? So from whom you are sending to whom you want to send here, okay. That address you have specified. So and along with that your message here, okay. So now the sender message must determine a value of R here. It is nouns, random number it is. Such that, okay. So now such that, so that random number whatever you are use no. So it depends on that random number. So what are the hash value you will get no. That hash value must start with the zero here. Okay. So starting it must be begins with the zero. So that sender has to determine that which random number if I take. So after adding the message random number and time. So what are the hash value you will get no after applying the hash function that hash value result must be begins with the n number of zeros here. So then what is the thing you have to do now? So that sender has to send the triplets here. That triplet triple contains what it is? Message, random number and time. So before allies the recipient okay accepts the mail here. She needs to verify that time is recent or not. Okay. So that receiver whenever they receive the message whether it is the spam message or not that one you have to check here. So for checking that first thing you have to check whether time is the current time or not. That is the recent time is not. And next one more is that. So this triple okay MRT hash value whether it begins with n zeros or not. If it begins with n zeros then what is the meaning of that one is what it is? Yes, I am receiving the message from the that particular okay sender not by the as a spam message here okay. So here whenever the recipient receive this message what the receiver will do now because receiver is having the these three messages and hash value of that. So the recipient can verify that okay HMRT. So this message is this there message M random number and current time is there and also the hash value of this triple is there. So now when the receiver receive they once again have they have to calculate the triple for this okay and whether it begins with the n zeros or not. If it begins with the n zeros then as yes, it is a exact or required message here. It is not a spam message here. So at the receiver side how many times you have to compute as the hash here? Single hash here. But at the sender side how many times you have to calculate this uh, hash function because this random number you have to take the different numbers and you have to check whether it begins with the that hash value begins with n zeros or not here. So first random number you will try if you may get or may not. Next second number you will take and you will try. Next third number like that you have to repeat for okay n times that is 2 to the power of n times you have to perform this procedure. Maximum 2 to the power of n times you have to compute this hash value by selecting the random numbers then only you will get that the zeros okay that hash value starts with the zeros here. So now here it is what it is in the first time you won't get here based on the randomly selecting the different random numbers and based on the trial and error method at for any one random number you may get the hash value starts with the zeros here. Okay, so now here thing is what it is while work for the recipient it is always a single hash for the receiver. What are the message they received? Just they have to calculate only once hash value and they will just check the whether it begins with n zeros or not. But that begins with n zeros it must be checked by whom? It must be verified by the sender. They have to select the random numbers. So for that random numbers if it is begins with n zeros it is okay. Otherwise they have to make the trial method here. So for the sender side they have to try for 2 to the power of n times of the hash computation here. Whereas for the recipient single hash is enough here. So in that time what happens here? For the acceptable, for the normal email users it is good okay. So now my intention is I want to send the message here. So that normal message only once you will send here okay. So that time you can go for this trial and error method and you can do the procedure here. But it is unacceptable for spammers here. 
spammers intention is to harm the users here so that's why they will select the okay random messages and they will send as a spam okay messages here so in that situation trying to starts with the begin zeros is the very big hectic for the spammers so it is not a acceptable for spammers because they have to send the messages for that they have to make this computation here so in the computation okay what are the cost it is required no it is high for the spammers because they are sending the spam messages of more than one here for acceptable for the normal users because they have to send here but spammer intention is to harm here for harming also they have to work hard here okay in this way you can also reduce the spam reduction okay in this way because it's become the hectic for the spammers so calculation procedure all those things that in the uh, for doing all those procedure instead of sending the 10 spam messages they can okay spammers can send only the two or three messages here okay so this is what we call as a spam reduction okay is it clear now these are the sum of the users for hash function one is the online bit bit values instead of sending directly if you are send the okay hash value of the bit amount then you can prevent from the attackers to see what is the bit amount you are okay uh, bidded at the current situation and one more is if the spammers intention is to send the spam messages so now if you are using this hash function and this criteria so that hash value begins with the n zeros criteria if you are using now then it's become the hectic for the spammers to send the more spam messages here next miscellaneous crypto related topics here some of the topics related with the cryptography let's see first one is the secret sharing here if allies and bob want to share the secret here and even allies not trust on bob and bob is also not having the trust on allies here but they want to share the secret s here so in that time so neither allies nor bob alone can determine secret s with the probability better than guessing here it is very simple so that secret message what are the secret message you want to send that is what we call as a secret s here this message now allies and bomb want to share here for sharing that allies know the half secret message and bob know the half secret message if allies and bob message if you are joined no then only you will get the or you will reveal what is the actual secret message here so individually even allies for allies also remaining part of the message is not known here so individually for bob also remaining part of the message is not known so that's why it is highly impossible for bob to determine what is the actual secret message and for allies also it is not possible here only they can do the trial and error method as a guessing here so if both and allies are okay joined though what are the message they know both the messages if you are joined together then they can easily determine what is the secret here okay so for that they have taken the example here so this is one point x1 uh, y1 and this is the another point x0 and y0 so linearly linear okay well, okay point you want to join these two points and after joining that you can reveal what is the secret here okay so if you know only the x and y1 point this point if you know but you don't know this point here then is it possible to draw the line linearly no it is not possible even you know x0 and y0 point but you don't know this point here so without the help of this one drawing the linear line is not possible here because you can draw any linear lines here okay like this you like this you can draw like this you can draw like this you can draw okay any different linear lines you can draw here if you don't know the another point say by the okay from the single point okay joining the linear line is not possible to reveal the secret here if you know this point also then if you join this two then if you extend that one then you can reveal this what is the secret s here okay so that is what we call as a two out of two if this point and this points is known then we call as a two out of two to reveal the secret here next one more concept is there two out of three here two out of three means what among this okay three points okay 
as a three users. So this user point it is known by the allies and this user point is known as a Bob and this point as a Charlie. You assume that this secret is known by the Charlie and this part of the secret is known by the Bob and this secret part is known by the allies here. Whenever you join these things then only you can reveal this what is the secret here. Okay. So here option is there. If I know the x2 and y2 point and x2, x1 and y1 point, I can draw the linear line here. Even if I know, okay, this point and I know this point. With the help of this two point also, I can draw here. Even if I don't know what is this point here, okay. x2, y2 point, if it is, okay, unknown, then with the help of x1, y1 and x0, y0, I can reveal or I can draw the linear line and after extension I will get what is the S here. Okay, point of the S I can reveal here with the help of these two points. Or I know this X2 and Y2 value and X0 and Y0 value. With the help of these two points also if I join, if I extend then I can reveal this point here, S here. So that is what we call as a 2 out of 3 here. Among the 3, okay. Uh, uh, secrets. So, uh, among the three uh, points, if I join only two with the help of the two keys, I can reveal what is the secret here. Okay. Next is if it is parabola, if it is not a linear line, then what happens here? If I know only these two points, it is not possible to get the parabola to reveal this S here. If I know all the three points, then only I can draw the parabola and with the help of that parabola, I can re okay, reach what is the S here. This is the 3 out of 3. This is very simple. So, what are the secrets you want to share? Among the number of users, if two users are there, then two okay, keys are there. If you are combine those two keys, then you can reveal the secret here. Now, three users are there. Among these three, any two keys, if you know, then you can reveal the okay, secret here. But in some situation, so if all the three keys, if you know, then only it is possible to reveal the secret here. So, in that situation, you call that one as a three out of three here. Is it clear now? These are the sum of the miscellaneous to share the secret here. Next, same thing you are go for the key escrow. So, now for example, now question is key want, okay, if you want to encrypt the any messages, you require the key here. So, that key you want to save somewhere here because that key is known by the any others also, then it's become the problem here. So, for that, what are the things they will do? You have to maintain your key also secretly. For maintaining the key secretly, allies will approach the agencies. That is what we call as a escrow agencies. But even this allies is also not trust on any individual agency. So now what the allies will do now? So what is the key is there? That key is divided as a subparts. If key is K, then it is subdivided as what it is? K1, K2, okay, and K3. Instead of, okay, storing this one okay in any one of the agency old key uh, in the one of the agency because even allies also not have the faith on the individual agency so what allies will do know to store this key as a secretly okay so the allies will divide this key as a key 1 key 2 and key 3 so for the one agency allies will give the to pro provide the security for this K1 here. You maintain the K, K2 by second agency and for the K3 third agency. So now in this way if you are do know so even with the help of the K1 okay can't do anything here. If all the agencies keys are combined then only it is possible to retrieve what is the exact key is used by the allies for making encryption or for making the or decrypting the messages here. For encryption and decryption, what are the key you are using? No, that key also you require to maintain securely here. To maintain securely, you can take the help of the agencies here, but you can't trust on single agent here. So, in that situation, what is the thing you can do? You divide your key as a parts and those parts you store in a different agencies. That is what we call as a M out of N 
secret sharing scheme here m out of n secret sharing gives means it may be 2 out of 2 or 2 out of 3 or 3 out of 3 here it depends on u here so that scheme only we call as a shamir secret sharing scheme here for example suppose n equal to 3 and m equal to 2 then allies key is s here okay then you can go for the one of the scheme as a 2 out of 3 even you can also go for the okay 3 out of 3 or 2 out of 2 here based on your requirement is it clear no this is one of the miscellaneous comes regarding how to maintain the key securely okay thank you